Hey there, welcome back to the shop. Another day working on the 40. Uh, spent uh, quite a few days here working on the front clip. A lot of arguing, persuading, coaxing. Had this off on, off and on probably eight times. Uh, just getting everything worked worked in. I think sit pretty good. Uh, the other little project we had is new lights. Been working with kind of just on and off random lights here for a while. Uh, ordered up some of the LED ones, they've gotten a little bit cheaper, um, so it's kind of nice to have a little bit more light on the old subject. Um, so, happy to have that. Hopefully it helps um, filming as well as working. Um, obviously it was more for the working, but um, video will be a little bit better. Um, past that, uh, working on the tub. Today, looking to break out the welder, send home the uh, firewall to tub mating surfaces, get that uh, tied in, finalized, and we'll break out the plasma, cut the floors, get those tuned up, and then kind of make notes of anything else we got to do when the tub's off. Uh, but that'll be nice to get the tub finalized. That'll be a big step forward. I'm getting there on the bodywork, um, and pretty soon we'll be in paint. Um, so enough yapping, let's get cracking. <laughs> So one last check before we start digging in. Um, door seams are actually sitting pretty good. Pretty happy there. Running boards are sitting pretty good. This mating surface is nice and flush. There's nothing kicked crooked there. Um, same way with the line here by the fender. So we're sitting all pretty good there. You know, like I say, you had a little bit of teething pain, a little bit of, a little bit of coercion and persuasion, uh, but we got her there. Um, everything's sitting pretty good here. We still have the slightly higher center point on the bib at the up about a half inch, um, but after a little bit more work, it is nice and square, so it's not kicked crooked in any way that way or this way. Um, like I say, I took the fenders on and off about five to eight times, um, worked as much as I could, um, and every time it just kind of wanted to sit like it is. Um, so for whatever reason, it wants to have a little bit bigger smile. Um, nobody's really going to know sit for the hardcore cruiser heads. Um, so I think, you know, in order to not cause any other problems, we're going to roll with that. Um, and then same way here on the driver's side, we're sitting pretty good. That, that gap is good. This line is straight. Everything here is nice and good. Uh, no gaps in its teeth or anything. Uh, this is sitting pretty good. And if you look, you can kind of look around the door on the inside and get a better idea as well. Um, you know, you're sitting pretty good down the windshield pillar on top. Um, so feeling pretty good. Uh, I got to pull off the doors, get those out of the way. Um, you can fold them all the way forward. <laughs> um, they are, you know, typical Jeep like doors. You could swing them forward, but then you are putting a little bit of weight on that firewall forward um, that it's better off to just pop the two pins and put them on the floor. Um, so. We'll get those pulled and make some room. My handy dandy door latches. I don't know why I need that. Let's see. Well, maybe you do. That was my finger. Yep. Box end does make it a handy way to grab those uh, roll pins. These are getting chopped anyway, so you don't have to worry about dinging them up or anything. Uh, we're going to replace them with some fresh hardware. Zoink. Good to go. Same on the other side. So this is the main main area we're dealing with. Uh, factory, they just had a weld across the top here. Um, they didn't do anything down the side, they just had this, this bolt basically to press it forward. Um, once that's done, there's a few small spot welds basically to hold this floor pan to the other floor pan. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we do have a bit of a interesting
we do have an interesting uh, little bit of fitment issue here. Um, this folded flange rides nice. It's straight. It's square. Uh, meets up nice where the door lip goes. Uh, but for whatever reason, it was cut a little bit crooked at the factory when they made the tub. So you got a bit of a gap there. What we're going to have to do is a little bit of the old fill rod trick, most likely. You can tuck that in there, and it helps kind of give you something to bridge that gap while you weld it. Not perfect, but there's just no material there to work with. I didn't make that cut. It was there from the, from the factory on the tub side. The other side is a little bit better um, on the driver's side, a um, little closer fit, uh, but we can work with that, not the end of the world. First things first, we're just gonna give this a little bit of a clean. The tub's pretty clean. The firewall is clean from uh, blasting, but we'll give it a hit with the uh, baby baby cheek poker. Um, baby as in small, not poking baby's cheeks. That would just be cruel. Ride right down there, and we'll nibble them off right about there. There is all sorts of stuff you can use to kind of help with those those gaps. Uh, some people will use like a TIG filler rod. In this case, it's a little bit small. Um, again, uh, normally you want to make your gaps a little bit tighter. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't make the gap, so I'm working with what I got. Um, Looking to see if we can get that guy to tuck in there. He's sitting pretty good. That's not too bad. Oops. Come back, friend. That's pretty good. Gives me a nub at the top to work with. gap was just a little bit wider, needed to make a wider wider bead there. Uh, what we'll probably do is just grind it down a little bit to keep a nice flesh edge there. Um, and then we'll give her one more, one more tack.
little bit of touch up with body seam sealer there, but uh, just a little bit of leveling compound there just to deal with that whole thing, but not too bad. Rolling old school. Bit of crud on that one. Let's 
I think there was a little bit of a seam sealer hiding underneath that fella. Same deal on the old driver's side. Again, a little bit of a gap, a little smaller on this side. Should be able to get, get by with uh, just a little bit of TIG filler versus uh, that wider filler rod I used. Um, but same deal, zap it up, zap the inside, tack the floors, um, and then we'll be moving on to work on that floor pan. Both sides are tacked in, 
Floor pans are tacked across like they were factory. Sides are welded in. A little bit of finishing work to do there, but otherwise they're set solid, so there's no going back now. Well, there it is. You can always cut. You can always cut metal, um, but it's pretty good here. Still got my turnbuckle in. I don't know. My legs are in the way. Still got the turnbuckle in here. This is to pull that tub in. For some reason, it was too wide from the, the factory. So I use that turnbuckle to bring bring those rocker panels in. Uh, but as we did that, um, there is a pretty big oil can in the floor. The rest of it. Um, not sure how well you can actually see it, um, but you can actually kind of get it to, to pop there. Um, I think our best course is going to be to cut it right about there and see what that relieves. Um, can't cut a lot on the passenger side because of that uh, fuel cell dimple, which I think is actually holding it pretty flat. Um, it kind of pushed all of the, all of the wrinkles to this side. Um, so we're going to cut it here with the plasma and see exactly how she springs um, and put a little bit of protective stuff underneath just so we don't uh, blast the paint on the transmission kind of cross brace there. So we're going to get that set up, going to mark a line and see, uh, see what we can do there to get that floor laying flat again. Kind of interesting as you slowly work the oil canning out of it, uh, you can see the, the overlap growing a little bit more and more, which is what we expected. So we'll keep working on that. And keep getting that to uh, go in. Once we actually get it in there, we should be able to run the plasma back along it and get us a nice clean edge to weld. Fairly hidden seam, should be able to work it from underneath as well. So, not too worried there. But it is a little bit to get that uh, laying flat again.
no, don't do that. So it's still got a little bit of a hump here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a nibble here. Normally you'd probably go just further, but there's, you know, you got some dimples and some captive nuts here for stuff. I'm just going to give it a, a nibble here um, and see if we can release that a little bit. We got to seam it anyway, um, so not a big deal. Um, Nothing underneath there. So, much got done what we needed to driver's side firewall is all mated with the tub seam runs across there tacked in like factory factory uh, same on this side uh, tacked in welded as it needs to be got bolts where it needs to uh, welded on the outside as well got pretty much got the oil can out of our floor um, just got a quick kind of L cut there to get the give it some relief uh, it'll do the deed. Just got a few tacks in it now. I'm going to weld that up when we take the tub off because it's just easier to work from both sides. Um, but it's enough to keep it stable for now. Uh, while there was misbehaving a little bit on the gas feed. Um, and it's time for dinner. Uh, but uh, past that, uh, thanks for riding along. Got some work done today. Um, kind of a major milestone there, getting the tub and the firewall made it back up. So pretty happy with that. Uh, a little bit grungy. 
Uh, again, kind of as usual, time for dinner, time to clean up the shop. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.